Hi everybody, my name is Shimlan Siddiqui. I'm CTO for Public Sector at Entity Data, and welcome to the CTO Foresight Series. Today I want to talk to you about a topic that impacts every single employee in government, and it's probably one of the most important towers that a CIO has to you know, deal with, and that's end user services, end user computing. So what is end user services? Just among other things, it includes things like service desk and service management. So incident management, problem management, configuration change. It includes things like field services, asset management, IT asset management in particular, so hardware and software, uh, mobile device management, virtual desktop infrastructure, and things of that nature. So folks, one of the reasons why we do this series is to be able to Understand, better understand the market, better understand where the market is going from a technology standpoint, and to be able to help our customers future-proof their enterprises. And so with that, I wanted to shed some light on areas that we think are important for you to consider as you embark on the next generation journey for your end user services environment, as we call the dynamic workplace. So it really starts with level one and really bringing automation into level one. So things like robotic process automation, omni-channel support, but it goes beyond that. And, and I think that the goal in any focused transformation in end user experiences is to try to reduce cost. And how do you do that is to move into the level zero, which is self-help and self-heal, provide omni-channel user support, proactive device management. So things like advanced service desk, virtual assistance and chatbots, persona-based support in the automated omni-channel user support area. And you're looking at proactive device management. So things like walk-up kiosks, IT vending machines, as well as automated inventory management. Where we really want to get to, and is probably the most transformative of all, is moving towards AI-based advanced analytics, which is really level minus two. And in this area, you're really looking at proactive support, which includes preventing problems before they actually occur. So some of the benefits of this model, if you will, it includes things like increase in end user satisfaction and productivity. Remember, we talked about transforming the end user experience. Looking at increased security and compliance making sure that you're reducing your overall contact volumes, increase in first contact resolution, or what they call FCR, reduction in desk side visits, AI-based bots to manage conversations and deflect volume, proactive support, so continuous service improvements. These are all important benefits that you can gain. And, you know, is looking at multilingual automated translations and intelligent automation, being able to use next level of self-service with tools such as virtual agents to directly converse with end users to resolve issues proactively being able to create and build in experience monitoring, create real-time monitoring of user environments, applications and infrastructure to enable better IT and align user wants and needs. Your automated self-help and self-healing tools. An example of that would be being able to address configuration management issues, automatically remediate those configuration management issues with reports and real-time dashboards so you don't have to worry about the inefficiencies of being able to scan your devices and then how long is it going to take before those devices go back to the end user. Anywhere, anytime device computing, right? Combining MDM, virtualization, and cloud-based services to be able to enable users to work from anywhere or just about on anything. And finally, there's tremendous value to governments as they, if they're able to apply some of the things that I talked about today. More importantly, significantly improve your user and employee experience. Being able to enhance your data security and accessibility, ensuring that security is no longer an afterthought in these kind of scenarios. Ensuring that you're providing more choices and flexibility to your employees and end users uh, as you deploy and provision services making sure that you're delivering faster and more flexible services back to your employees. And eventually, being able to use the savings and efficiencies to be able to attract and retain more talent, to be able to uh, spur more innovation in your end user services environments. So with that, I thank you for your time today. Appreciate it. Thank you.